It's not an exaggeration to say that the three astrologers you're going to hear from today are three of the best practicing astrologers in the world. Welcome to the Mainly Moonology podcast. I'm your host, Yasmin Boland, an award-winning astrologer and the Sunday Times best-selling author of books including Moonology and creator of the Moonology Oracle Cards. My intention for this podcast is to help you understand how you can create your dream life using Mainly Moonology, the moon, as your guide. This week, we're getting a Mars retrograde. What this means is that the planet Mars, also known as the planet of blood and war and desire and chasing our dreams and anger and fighting and determination, and by the way, sex, is going to appear to go backwards in the skies from our vantage point here on Earth. It's not really going backwards. It's an optical illusion, but in astrology, it has a certain significance, which astrologers have been watching play out for millennia, hence the conclusions we've come to. One thing I've really loved doing on the podcast recently is getting some of my fellow astrologers and asking them their opinion on certain events. I did it a few weeks ago with the 8-8 Lionsgate podcast, and I'm doing it again now with Mars in Gemini. It's just so fascinating to hear different astrologers' opinions on the same astrological phenomena. So let's start with defining what does Mars represent in our horoscopes? What does Mars retrograde herald? Mars being the planet of the war, does this mean that the wars that we are also focused on, especially here in Europe, are going to come to an end? It's not an exaggeration to say that the three astrologers you're going to hear from today are three of the best practicing astrologers in the world. You can find links to their sites and their social media in the show notes, and I highly recommend you get in touch with them, Lynn Bell, Kelly Surtees, and Cassandra Tyndall. They are great astrologers, and if you want to learn more about astrology or get a reading from them, you really can't go wrong with any of these three. So let's start with Cassandra Tyndall and with her definition of Mars and Mars retrograde. Please note that Mars retrograde kicks off on October 30 and will last until January 12 next year. So Cassandra Tyndall is an astrological consultant who tells me she finds immense joy in helping people unravel who they are and where they're going via teaching this mystical and magical thing we call astrology. So Cass, or Cassandra Tyndall, Cass is an astrology teacher and through her online teaching platform and her monthly Golden Circle Club members area, she connects with thousands and thousands of astrologers every single month. She's also taught at some of the world's most esteemed astrology conferences and she is a part of the Water Trio Astrology Podcast, if you'd like to check it out, which she does along with Alicia Youssef and also Kelly Surti who's also going to be on today's episode. You can find Cassandra at her website, cassandratindall.com, and there's a link to it in the show notes as well. So I started by asking Cassandra, who and what is the planet Mars and what does Mars represent in the horoscope and in astrology? Mars is a planet that symbolizes our initiating qualities, our drive, energy, and mojo how we assert ourselves, basically how we get things done. Mars is also known as a warrior or a planet of war. Gemini is a air sign. It's mutable in its quality. So multiple ideas, a busy mind, it's scattered, data, information, all of those kind of logistical things are Gemini's domain. So when we put these two qualities together, this can show a variety in the actions that we take, which might sound appealing, but let's face it, activity and achievement are not always the same thing. So when Mars goes backwards from our perspective, it can be a frustrating time. Mars wants to go. It wants to have action, accomplish things. So Mars retrograde will denote a period of fluctuating energy. So you may discover that one day you feel like you're ticking all of the boxes and getting everything done. And then you're thinking, what's this Mars uh, Mars retrograde? I'm not feeling it at all. And then the next day you feel like you're hit by a bus and there's that real energy plummet. That is totally normal with Mars retrograde. 
Lynn Bell has been practicing astrology for over 40 years. Her approach comes out of many years of client practice, teaching and speaking at the CPA in London and now at MISPA and Astrology University Online. Lynn is known for her incredible creative depth. She's lectured at conferences all over the world and has given many, many keynote speeches as well. Her archetypal approach fuses psychology and spirituality. She's the author of multiple books, including Planetary Threads, Cycles of Light, and she's a co-author of the Mars Quartet. She was the 2016 winner of the Charles Harvey Award for Services to Astrology, and you can find her at lynnbellastrology.com, plus we have a link in the show notes. When I asked Lynn about Mars retrograde, she immediately pointed out something which has always struck me as extremely important. When a planet is retrograde, it means it spends longer than usual in one part of our chart highlighting that part of our horoscope and therefore that part of our life. So say, for example, you're Sagittarius rising, then Mars will be retrograde in your love zone, your seventh house. So there's going to be more emphasis on that part of your life, your love life during the retrograde. So before we hear from Lynn, here's a quick summary of where Mars retrograde is going to be for you. For reasons I won't go into here, it's absolutely crucial that you listen to your rising sign if you want a really accurate prediction of where the Mars is going to affect you. That's because by looking at your rising sign, you are effectively looking at the chart for your time, date and place of birth rather than just for your sun sign or your star sign. If you don't already know your rising sign, just go to moonmessages.com forward slash free chart and you can find out for free. So in a nutshell, if your Aries rising, the retrograde is taking place in your third house, which is also known as your communication zone. So it's going to be affecting how you think, communicate and listen. And because Mars is going retrograde, you may find that you're actually either a little bit slower to say the wrong thing, lose your temper. Um, It can also mean, though, that you're just a little bit more like the brakes are on a little bit mentally. If you're Taurus, then Mars is going backwards in your second house, which is to do with cash, property and possessions. So there could be some backward motion there. If you're Gemini rising, then Mars retrograde will be affecting your entire life. So instead of charging forwards, it's a time for you to turn inwards and uh, maybe stop trying to push ahead and start to think what needs um, redoing. If you are Cancerian or a moon child, Mars will be going backwards in your 12th house. So it's a very good chance for you to focus longer and stronger on your spiritual life, but also to go back over some of your fears and see if you can't get rid of them. Leo rising, it's in your 11th house, which is friendships and uh, dreams. So it may well be an old argument comes up with a friend, which is a bit annoying, but maybe this time you can actually sort things out. I mean, it can also be a time where you sort of start to hold a little bit back on chasing your dreams and instead um, go backwards over things and see what needs more energy before you press forward. Virgo rising, it's in your 10th house of career. So instead of forging ahead in your brilliant career, now's the time when you might feel the brakes are on a little bit. But again, you know, spend a little bit longer on something and maybe you're going to get further uh, with it in the long run. Libra rising, it's taking place in your ninth house. So on the one hand, this can mean um, some frustrations and delays when it comes to travel and study, uh, but it can also mean actually going back and revisiting somewhere during the Mars retrograde that you've been before. Uh, that's meaningful to you. If you're Scorpio rising, it's taking place in your eighth house. Now, this eighth house is your sex zone and one of your two money zones, but Mars is also the sex planet. So that's kind of interesting. So you've got the sex planet reversing in your sex zone. So yes, you might have sex with your ex, (laughs) or you might just find that your sex life is going a little bit backwards and feeling a bit frustrated. Um, ditto with with money may well be a time where um, instead of pressing forwards and you know finding out lots of great new ways to make money um, the brakes are on a bit and you need to go over past ideas past methods and just uh, turn things inwards a bit um, expect a few financial frustrations but also look at what can I um, what can I do over uh, when it comes to my financial setup Sagittarius as I mentioned Mars will be going backwards in your seventh house of relationships so on the one hand if you've been having a big argument with someone especially someone who's important in your life including your partner or your ex that can ease up now 
Uh, it can be a time where you decide to lay down your guns. Hopefully the whole world will decide to lay down their guns. Uh, but it can also be a time of frustrations and, um, you know, issues with your partner that just take a little bit longer than you'd like to resolve because we've got this Mars retrograde for a very long time, many months. If you're Capricorn uh, rising, then um, Mars will be going back in your sixth house of daily work and health. So on the one hand, a really good time for you to put a, um, a new exercise regime into play now and to really focus on it uh, and to really go for it and just keep going and going and going on the same thing throughout the retrograde, which lasts till next year. But it can also be a time where you kind of like, Ugh, can't be bothered, can't be bothered to do my exercise, can't be bothered to look after myself. And of course, if you start to feel that you need to have a word with yourself, because, you know, looking after yourself is paramount. If you're Aquarius rising, Mars is reversing in your fifth house. Now, this is kind of interesting because it means that uh, instead of forging ahead when it comes to romance, creativity and children, there's going to be delays. There's going to be um, things that you need to do over, maybe a little bit to use one of Kelly's words that she's going to come up with later, something you need to renovate uh, when it comes to romance, creativity and children, something where instead of just pushing forwards, you need to keep putting in a concerted effort to get it right. And finally, um, Pisces, if you're Pisces rising, Mars will be going backwards in your fourth house. So you may just be going home after an extended period away. You may kind of go home and feel a bit stuck at home, or maybe you're trying to get away from home and you're a bit frustrated because Mars retrograde means not, you need to focus on home and family for a little bit more. So Let's talk a little bit more about the fact that the retrograde means that this part of your life that I've just mentioned is going to be triggered for the next seven months while Mars is retrograde. Here's what the amazing Lynn Bell had to tell us. One of the things that's fundamental about any planet going retrograde is that it becomes more potent and particularly a fast moving planet like Mars suddenly weighs in on a particular part of the chart. My experience of these retrogrades is that they intensify uh, the place that they're stopping, the place that they're making a station in your chart. I've found them to require lots of responses, very active, very busy times. Now, we normally think of a retrograde as a time of stepping back uh, from our usual way of functioning. And one of the possibilities with retrograde Mars is that it can be a little regressive, particularly in Gemini, which is a sign that splits things in two. Now I'd like to introduce the third and final astrologer whose wisdom we're going to be listening to about Mars retrograde on this podcast. Kelly Surtees is a consulting astrologer, teacher, writer, and editor, and like all three of the astrologers you're hearing from today, someone I consider a friend. She works with clients and students around the world, sharing her infectious passion for astrology and and has more than 15 years in private practice under her belt. She's warm, she's experienced, and she's extremely insightful. Kelly loves exploring astrology's history and also in her personal life, <laughs> loves escaping into the ocean. Her specialty areas include career, life direction, health, fertility, love, health, and happiness. Oh, I think we said health twice. Maybe it's a, a double whammy for her. Kelly meets clients and lectures throughout the USA, Canada, and Australia, though she makes Canada her current home. You can connect with Kelly via her website, kellysastrology.com, and there's a link to that and her membership area in the show notes. So I asked Kelly, what's the number one thing you think people should know about Mars retrograde in Gemini? So the number one thing I think people should know about Mars retrograde in Gemini is that nothing is really certain. Everything is in flux. There's a lot of variable energy with Mars being retrograde and with that retrograde happening in the sign of Gemini, which is a sign known for its mutable or variable qualities. So from October 30th through to January 10th, everything is kind of up in the air. It doesn't mean you can't move forward, but it does mean there might be this sense of taking two steps forward and then one step back. When possibilities are up in the air and things aren't quite certain, it does create some openness. And one of the gifts of this Mars retrograde in Gemini is curiosity. Now, we might be so curious that we're scattering our energy or our focus and, and maybe spreading ourselves a little bit thin. So that's one of the cautions of this Mars retrograde in Gemini. 
is to be curious, but not about absolutely everything, but to be curious about a few things that you could broaden your understanding around. For those of you who know a little bit about astrology already, I just wanted to share another thought from Lynn Bell, who was talking about the fact that because the South Node is currently in the sign of Scorpio with the North Node in Taurus, the South Node being in Scorpio means that using a traditional astrological approach, Scorpio is ruled by the planet Mars. So Mars is currently ruling the South Node. Mars right now rules the South Node. And in Gemini, it increases the pull between shadow and light, between the dark unknown places and our own desires. And those straightforward intentions that we think we have when we're about to do something. So Mars in Gemini tends to split because it's a sign that carries two different directions. You can see this split going on in the world where people are being pulled apart, not able to hold their coherence. But it can also mean that we suddenly see there's more than one option. We don't always have to do things the way we've done them before. One thing to remember as you consider all of this is that Mars is in Gemini, so the sign which rules the mind. Mars in Gemini going forwards gives us all a boost mentally. Mars in Gemini would help us to think faster, speak faster, maybe think and speak more aggressively, less kindly, more brutally. Mars is all those things. But what about when Mars is going retrograde in Gemini? For one thing, it can mean anger turning inwards, which is something to watch out for because anger turned inwards can lead to depression. Unless, of course, you happen to be born with Mars retrograde in your chart, in which case this retrograde might suit you rather well. You can find out if you have Mars retrograde in your chart by going to the same address I gave you before, moonmessages.com forward slash free chart and just look to see if there's a tiny little red rx after your mars if there is it means you have mars retrograde cass also pointed out another issue that could easily come up with mars retrograde since the sign is connected to the mind gemini what's being stirred up could be rather Mm, let's just say it could keep you up at night. Now, Mars agitates and irritates. Gemini is a sign of the mind. So it's quite possible because we've had a very long lead up to Mars retrograde is that you may have discovered you're experiencing some sleep disturbances, possibly increased stress, worry, anxiety, and general churning of the mind. Now, Mars has had a long retrograde lead in. Um, The shadow period began September 3. So what happens during this period may not feel particularly surprising to you. So what can you do about this? My advice is to start, if you haven't already, to eliminate distractions. Try and prioritize what's important. What can you do in a reasonable time frame? You might even want to reference the Stephen Covney matrix, which you can Google. Talks about uh, quadrants, you know, what's urgent and important versus what is not urgent and not important. So the idea of do, either plan, delegate or eliminate will be really handy when you've got tasks at hand. So if you've got 10 pots on the boil right now, try and aim for four, maybe even two if that's even possible. I do think Mars retrograde in Gemini is going to be more about managing your energy as opposed to to your time. So a task that might usually take you X amount of time is probably going to take you double that. So what about collectively and what about the fact that Mars is going to be aligning with Neptune during this retrograde, just before, during and after? And what about the Saturn influence? Collectively, I do suspect there's going to be a ramp up in propaganda. If you think about it, Mars in Gemini could be described as a war on the mind. The Neptune component can bring added confusion from authority with Saturn. So this might mean pandemic stuff. It could be the Ukraine war stuff. It could be things to do with uh, food and energy. 
Kelly added that she feels Mars retrograde is going to be a time to pull things down and redo them like a renovation. It was interesting to hear her perspective. One way that I'm thinking about this Mars retrograde in Gemini is this concept of renovation. And if you know your personal birth chart and you know the house where you have the sign of Gemini, think about undergoing a type of renovation or renewal around the topics of the Gemini part of your chart. Now, not everybody will know their chart. So even if you don't know your chart, just think about this time frame through November and December 2022 as a chance to kind of pull apart, rearrange, and then put back together at least one area of your life. So you might have a particular project or topic that is uh, on your mind or that you want an area of your life that you want to improve or update. And one way I've encouraged people in my membership to work with Mars Retrograde is to think about an outcome that you'd like to have, uh, say, by February, March of 2023, or a goal that you might like to have achieved by February, March of 2023. Even though the retrograde of Mars ends in January of 2023, Mars will continue to spend time in Gemini until late March of 2023. So that's why I'm looking at that time frame. So notice the things that you get irritated by. Notice what you're frustrated with and see if you can kind of accept the challenge of making an improvement. We know Mars loves a challenge. He loves a project. When Mars is involved, we do want to feel like we're doing something or taking action. And when Mars is retrograde, sometimes our action taking can be about cleaning up unfinished business from the past, or it might be uh, moving forward with this larger project or larger undertaking. And the idea of a renovation is, is kind of what I'm working with. And if you think about a renovation, for any of you who have undertaken a renovation on a property that you've owned, or if you've had friends or family members, you know, go through a renovation, you'll know that while the end outcome can be what you wanted, it can be quite a messy or a chaotic process. And what are the tools that are going to help with this deeper pulling apart and then putting back together? You know, when we renovated our kitchen a few years ago, I just hadn't quite got my head around the fact that it would be completely ripped apart before we would end up with the new kitchen. And that was really interesting about this idea of like having to go through the mess to get to that, you know, bright, shiny, new, organized space on the other side. So in Kelly's opinion, what is the best way to make the most of this Mars retrograde? So to make the most of this Mars retrograde, I think we want to keep digging. We want to keep asking questions. We want to keep double checking information because of course this Mars retrograde is happening in a sign ruled by Mercury. So we know that ideas and connection and information moving around is going to be important to keep on top of. But give yourself a challenge. Know that it won't be smooth or easy, but kind of welcome that messy, chaotic place of creativity, knowing that while it might be messy in the present, there is an outcome where things are more functional and you've moved forward that you're looking to celebrate. And I'm going to give the last word to Lynn Bell. By the time Mars goes direct again on January 12th, it will be very close to another point in the sky, the fixed star of Aldebaran, one of the royal watchers, the bull's eye. So a suggestion we might make between the confused motivation of Mars at the beginning of its retrograde, whether that's over-enthusiastic or perhaps even under-enthusiastic, by the time it goes direct, it will be moving very close to this point in the chart, which is about seeing extremely clearly what's really going on in the world. What we have to be aware of on a personal level is how our energy and our desires are moving in more than one direction. And this is an amazing opportunity to become conscious of that. So there you have it, guys. Mars Retrograde by three amazing, amazing astrologers, Lynn Bell, Kelly Surtees, and Cassandra Tyndall. 
And just a reminder, if you love astrology and you love to work with the energies, my Moonology Diary 2023 is on sale now. So get out there and grab your copy from moonologydiary.com. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Mainly Moonology podcast. If you've enjoyed it, please subscribe, give us a review, and we'll be eternally grateful. We publish the podcast every Monday, 4 p.m. UK time, 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern, and I'm afraid to say it's silly o'clock in Australia, but it will be there when you wake up on a Tuesday morning. Have a great week. <laughs>